What do you do when you don't know what to do? Here it is. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 16. Rejoice always. Are you joyful? Are you waking up day by day going, I'm gonna give God praise. I know it feels like the world is crumbling around me, but my Bible tells me I'm going to rejoice always, always. Watch this, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Pray without ceasing. For the early church, the early church saw praying like breathing. Hmm. Praying without ceasing that every breath is my prayer. I'm in constant conversation with God. That's a heart check. Is the habit of your life to be praying like you're breathing? Notice what the scripture says in Acts chapter two. It says that every day they were gathering in homes and in the temple, meaning their prayer life wasn't just something that they were doing corporately, but their prayer life was also something they were doing privately. Very, very important that you see this, that they both go hand in hand. It's not either or, it's both and. It's corporate and it's individual. It's public and it's private. Listen to me. If all your Christianity happens publicly, you're in trouble. And if all your Christianity happens in private, you're not doing it right. It's both and. See, I wonder today, I wonder today what it is that you're lacking or what it is that you're missing. Because a relationship cannot survive without communication. Can you imagine if my wife and I, imagine if I only talk to my wife in public. What if we do, only time I ever communicate with Don Cherie is publicly. Well, how many know we would be missing intimacy? If you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> there's something that has to happen in private with a real relationship. But on the flip side, watch this. If I only communicate with my wife privately, how many of you know that right away I relieve myself of the responsibility of being a husband? Because when I go out publicly, I haven't let anybody know that we're in relationship. Therefore, it absolves me of all type of accountability. What it means is I can creep publicly without any accountability. I don't know if you're getting this because some of you right now, you feel like you're missing something. And I wonder, is the daily habit of your life, are you dedicated to prayer? Not just publicly, but also privately. See, some of you, you're only committed publicly. That's why every week when Sunday shows up, you say, I'm not gonna get on the stream because I miss how it used to be. I miss going to church and singing with people. But what you're really saying is, no, you're addicted to one form of a relationship with God, which is the only way you know how to worship God is with people around you that define accountability. And the problem is, is that you lack intimacy with God. There's just some things that you can't get from God with everybody else around. You've never learned how to get on your knees and cry out to God privately in an intimate way in your bedroom. So rather than thank God for technology, we complain because we're addicted to only praying to God publicly and we've missed out on privately meeting him. This is like a side note. This is a huge thing when it comes to the idea of sex and culture because people think sex is what creates intimacy. No doubt that sex has portions of intimacy, but true intimacy comes from a healthy, committed, trustworthy relationship that's communicating and honest. Sex doesn't develop intimacy. Making love is a completely different thing than having sex. Into me, see. God doesn't want a one night stand. God doesn't want to just meet you on Sunday and not talk to you the rest of the week. God is looking for somebody who will linger in private, linger in his presence. But the flip side of this whole thing is that some of us right now, it's not that we just are addicted to meeting God publicly. Some of us, it's the flip side. Some of us only pray in private. And what it's done is it's absolved us from any level of accountability meaning you're able to walk around and you look just like the world because nobody in your world even knows that you practice your faith. Woo! Some of you right now, you're behaving in a way that you should not be behaving. You're talking in a way that you should not be talking. You're thinking in a way that you shouldn't be thinking. 
You're responding in a way that you should not respond. Yet because you've only prayed in private and you've never let the world around you know that you're a person who practices faith, you have absolved yourself of every bit of accountability. Therefore, they expect you to respond like the world. They expect you to behave like everybody else around them. You're creeping in public and nobody even knows you're going against what you say is your belief. This is so important that we see this today. Are we dedicated to prayer day by day?